Hello, you peculiar people. I'm excited to share one of my favorite subjects. I love the idea and the feelings that are emitted when we talk about compassion. And uh, so that's our theme this month for March Allies and Appetizers um, as we continue to discuss our curriculum and our initiative with Unconditional Family. I'm excited to share some of these thoughts that you'll see today from subject matter experts to talk about the science of compassion, the critical benefit that it provides to all of humanity. And that's one of the things I think is so beautiful about compassion. Compassion is not just a gift that we give to other people. As you'll see in these conversations, scientifically it's been proven that as we continue to deepen our resolve and commitment to compassion, it comes back and benefits us mentally, spiritually, physically. What a wonderful gift. Something that you can put out so often each and every day that can turn around and benefit you personally. So we're excited to share this subject with you today, and I hope that uh, each of you will benefit greatly and once again uh, provide a, a greater depth in this community, a depth of loving and a commitment to truly love each of uh, every member of humanity. So thank you for leaning in and hope this is a great experience for each of you. What, what is compassion comprised of? There are various facets, and there's you know, referential and non-referential compassion. But first, compassion is comprised of that capacity to see clearly into the nature of suffering. It is that ability to really stand strong and to recognize also that I'm not separate from this suffering. But that is not enough, because compassion, which activates the motor cortex, means that we aspire. We actually aspire to transform suffering. And if we're so blessed, we engage in activities that transform suffering. But compassion has another component, and that component is really essential. That component is that we cannot be attached to outcome. Now, I've worked with dying people for over 40 years. I had the privilege of working on death row and in maximum security for six years. And I realized so clearly in bringing my own life experience from working with dying people and training caregivers that any attachment to outcome would distort deeply my own capacity to be fully present to the whole catastrophe. And when I worked in the prison system, it was so clear to me, this, that many of us in this room, and almost all of the men that I worked with on death row, the seeds of their own compassion had never been watered. That compassion is actually an inherent human quality. It is there within every human being. But the conditions for compassion to be activated, to be aroused, are particular conditions. I had that condition to a certain extent from my own childhood illness. And what is fascinating is that compassion has enemies. And those enemies are things like pity, moral outrage, fear. And you know, we have a society, a world, that is paralyzed by fear. And in that paralysis, of course, our capacity for compassion is also paralyzed. The very word terror is global. The very feeling of terror is global. So our work, in a certain way, is to address this imago, this kind of archetype that has pervaded the psyche of our entire globe. Now, we know from neuroscience that compassion has some very extraordinary qualities. For example, a person who is cultivating compassion, when they are in the presence of suffering, they feel that suffering a lot more than many other people do. However, they return to baseline a lot sooner. This is called resilience. Many of us think that compassion drains us, but I promise you, it is something that truly enlivens us. Another thing about compassion is that it really enhances what's called neural integration. It hooks up all parts of the brain. 
Another, which has been discovered by various researchers at Emory and at Davis and so on, is that compassion enhances our immune system. Hey, we live in a very noxious world. <laughs> Most of us are shrinking in the face of psychosocial and physical poisons, of the toxins of our world. But compassion, the generation of compassion, actually mobilizes our immunity. Over the last several decades, we have learned a great deal about brain function. We have learned a great deal about human behavior. We have learned a great deal about psychology. And as a result of that, we have realized that for to flourish and thrive, one must be compassionate. And institutionalized discrimination robs people of their spirit through despair and hopelessness. Whether it be in regard to their gender, their sexuality, their race, their religion, or their ethnicity. The principle of compassion lies at the heart of all religious, ethical, and spiritual traditions. Calling us always to treat all others as we wish to be treated ourselves. Compassion impels us to work tirelessly to alleviate the suffering of our fellow creatures. To dethrone ourselves from the center of our world and put another there. To honor the inviolable sanctity of every single human being. Treating everybody without exception. With absolute justice, equity, and respect. It is also necessary in both public and private life to refrain consistently and empathically from inflicting pain. To act or speak violently out of spite, chauvinism, or self-interest. To impoverish, exploit, or deny basic rights to anybody. And to incite hatred by denigrating others, even our enemies. Is a denial of our common humanity. We acknowledge that we have failed to live compassionately. And that some have even increased the sum of human misery in the name of religion. We therefore call upon all men and women to restore compassion to the center of morality and religion. To return to the ancient principle that any interpretation of scripture that breeds violence, hatred, or disdain is illegitimate. To ensure that youth are given accurate and respectful information about other traditions, religions, and cultures. To encourage a positive appreciation of cultural and religious diversity. To cultivate an informed empathy with the suffering of all human beings. Even those regarded as enemies. We urgently need to make compassion a clear, luminous, and dynamic force in our polarized world. Rooted in a principled determination to transcend selfishness. Compassion can break down political, dogmatic, ideological, and religious boundaries. Born of our deep interdependence, compassion is essential for human relationships and to a fulfilled humanity. It is the path to enlightenment and indispensable in the creation of a just economy and a peaceful global community.